You're listening to the Modern Healthcare Back Office, a podcast dedicated to solving the billing issues and gridlock facing the healthcare industry, presented by ProChamp, hosted by Chuck Ellis and Rachel Schools. Hey there, folks. Chuck here. I am really excited that you have joined my co-host, Rachel, and I today. Rachel, how are you doing? I am amazing. I'm surviving Mercury retrograde. How about you? Now that I know that, I am also surviving it. So <laughs> thank you for keeping me informed. That, that does explain some things. Yes. yes. We are joined once again by our friend and resident DME operations back office general sensei expert superhero superhero melissa wagner melissa thank you so much for joining us today (laughs) now rachel you and i were talking about this before recording you had uh, a really cool idea that you wanted to float by melissa and talk about today's subject so it's something that like really keeps me up at night right there's this there's problem that i find over and over again and it goes something like this right ah, we have this huge mess and we just don't know where to start. And everybody starts like running around and working. And this is global, right? This is every workplace that I've ever been at. Melissa actually likened it to Lucy and the Chocolate Factory. This keeps me up at night Mm -hmm. because I know that the real solution is to stop. Stop it. Slow down. Stop, collaborate, and listen. (gasps) Oh, my God. You got to sing it now. I'm just kidding. Don't. But anyway, <laughs> Melissa, I want <laughs> I wanted to get. Thank Melissa's you for sparing opinion. our listeners that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Melissa, what's your mm-hmm. thoughts? Yeah, no, I agree. I think that the tough balance here is that you have to slow down to speed up, right? And that that's a dichotomy that is difficult. But what you have to do is be able to target some areas where, you know, in order to fix that sort of chocolate factory scenario where we're not just stuffing the chocolates inside our shirts to make it look like we're being productive and at the end of the day there's no chocolates falling in the box and therefore there's no cash coming in the bank is to assess the most strategic and quickest wins and so to be able to put them in a couple of we could call them verticals to be a little bit cliche but if there's a a people process and technology approach and the most difficult piece is that if it's people um which was an experience that not unique to us and So when you can't just solve it with people, you have to get really strategic and targeted in terms of, okay, how can we make the most of what we have with the people that we've had? And so we have to be very targeted and analytical and and utilize, obviously, the data or the technology tools, although the people part may not be able to solve right away and that sort of roll down the speed up. We have to harness as much technology and that technology is a collaborative effort between the technology that's available to do the analytics and the technology that's available the within the yeah. actual business processing system to right to show us what types of things can we look at quick fixes in a database scenario where we turn on a flag or we adjust the price table or we get these quick things like why do coils keep producing with this particular modifier then it should move down so that kind of thing so we've got the people the technology the so that's sort of middle, that's the hub of what I think speaks to of where we go mm-hmm. to, to find the quick fixes. People's not for quick fix. It's a spoke. The hub is, can be the technology and that can be spokes within it. The technology we're talking about, we're talking about an analytical, like about how the eye, I'm talking about a tableau, we're talking about our, our analytics, uh, Pochian connect. And then we have process, right? So as we're looking at some of these things, we have to be mindful of is there a process, right, that, that's causing us to not pause, uh, optimize the technology? I want to just, or I want to call that out, that's Melissa. Not I didn't mean to interrupt you. Call out the process. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. 80% of the process and not the people. So it may not be as much of needing more people if we resolve the process, use the technology to answer some of those questions, then, then I think what we end up with is a slowdown but a speed can accomplish those two objectives. It's not easy. It takes the right minds and the right experience to do that. And that goes back to the whole collaborative, not collaborative in people stepping on each other's toes, but collaborative in terms of who can all of the most effective analysis and yeah. strategy around kind of get. All right. So no, I mean, there. I, that was perfect. Like you were going exactly where I thought that you would go with that. It's a matter of 
getting the right people to slow down. Like a single person really can't strategize. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> Chuck, I'm actually going to go to they ask you answer for a second. Okay. Love it. <laughs> so when, when I go in, Melissa, and I look at something, I have the whole revenue cycle in my mind, like I'm a weirdo, is broken down into these little segments, right? So I look at the whole, mm -hmm. that's my analytic. And then I have to understand what's feeding that. And then I go into the processes that I know make up that whole. So what are we talking about? Like cash posting, right? Actually, let's start at the beginning. Yep. So like we used to call fax wrangling, I call it data logging. So data logging and then intake, like I have these little compartments and then within them, I just start asking questions. What questions would I have if I were going to try to dig into this and figure out what's going on or what, what questions do I need answered? And it's there where, again, this is anywhere that I've ever worked and it's sort of a, a global issue. The more people we have asking those questions, the better we're going to get. Do you agree? Yeah, totally agree. And I went obviously super high level, but I think your point about the sort of operational analysis is meant to take that high level approach and then break it down into exactly what you're, just, you're discussing, you're talking about these various components because for our issue is maybe driving to one particular component or one components may require more effort than another. So it's then you get into the, as you're talking to, okay, so within the various components, starting with the facts, then intake, then documents, then confirmation, then billing, then AR, then all becomes the good goal. And then where in there, it, it can really bring to the surface very quickly, right? Things that either are not being addressed in a process or can be augmented by technology. And then when those two things are better aligned, then when we do bring on the people or add people, then we expect that to flow. Yeah, we don't have to chuck as well. I went oh. and watched that video just because I wanted to see it before we hopped on today. Just it's, it it's made so me funny. giggle. Yes, I almost want it's everybody right now to yes. pause. Please go watch that video before we continue this conversation. So mm. it's that cute and that funny. So Melissa. That relate that relatable, right? That We've all been there. Yeah. We've all had that conveyor belt get faster and feel like we're more and more out of control. The whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, why isn't anybody running in and screaming at sir? Right? Hello. <laughs> That's what always got me. Like, why are we being so compliant here? Yes, it is very, very relatable. What's your favorite operational like process? If you had to pick one area of the revenue cycle, it's cash <laughs> posting. Because Mine, yes. it tells the story. It tells if the I, entire story. And it's not, it tells you what you did. And I think we lose sight of the, it tells you what you're doing right. And we lose sight of the replication of, if we're doing this right, how do we use that to figure out what we're doing wrong? Instead of constantly just going down. It's going wrong path. I love cash posting. It takes me down a million rabbit holes. Most of the time, that's not a bad thing. It's favorite. my favorite too. And anytime that I go in to do an operational workflow, I always start with cash posting. And I'm a big weirdo. I don't like on the data. I ask for permission to actually just put, can I post cash please? So yes, there's a couple of things I'm doing there. The other, one of the Real reasons I love cash so much is because I'm an accountant at heart. Me too. Yes. I started That's college with around. the intent. First, I wanted to be a teacher. I won't go there because I changed 10 times. But just know mm -hmm. that one of those visions and the one I spent the most time in was accounting. But when it got into learning accounting laws, I like threw the book away and I was like, that is not me. I'm more of like a an operational accountant and I didn't want to go through the, you know what I mean, the other side. But with cash posting, yeah. there's a source of truth. And that source of truth is yes. your bank yes. account. Okay. And you're able yes. to literally, um, especially if you're OCD like me, Melissa, where I'm like, everybody, one deposit must be one deposit. People yeah. to say, I need to see this deposit transaction that's on my bank ledger. I need to see that matched up in my system of record or my software system. And you start at the absolute source of truth and it's the cleanest 
place. That's the reason I love cash. And then, like you said, once you start posting, the whole picture just starts to come to light for you. You see the denials first, but, and also, like you said, you see what got paid. So you can quickly go back and do a comparison and make a note and roll that out. My philosophy on the cash posting approach, albeit that a lot of it is automated today, but from an approach or working or, or is that I never wanted the people or the process to be data entry. It, I wanted people to be analytical. I wanted them to understand it in a way that they could see the information and be a source of both feedback and just very old school. I still like to look yes. at an EOB because I could in it and I can draw many conclusions. Most of them in my experience have been pretty spot on because of what I'm looking at and I can draw a lot of conclusions. So I can do that very quickly and efficiently, even without a lot of data, but they want the data and that tells us the actual quantification of the trend. But I think that's why the cash posting and the EOB itself is such a integral part of. Yep. I know that, you know, when I do post cash, I'm super prefer to do when I'm posting cash is say this transaction hit the bank and here it is in a nice electronically created deposit and I move on. So the other thing that you can do while you're cash posting is you figure out what papers and like, why am I posting from this manual EOB and how can I never do that again? ever. <laughs> so it's a good, it's a good way to get rid of paper. Yeah. Back to an operational workflow analysis. I'm hearing you and I both say we would start with cash. Tina, who is actually over on our infusion team, her favorite is also cash. I'm wondering if not today, Melissa, but maybe another day, you might be willing to go through and like build out a cash dash with us an ideal cash dashboard. Sure. You are doing an operational workflow analysis. What are the things that you would look for? And if you managed cash on a daily basis, what would your dashboard look like? Yep. Yeah, sounds like a good, good project. So that is a good lead up for a future episode. That is fun. We wanted to just do a quick get together and chat about that real quick. Is there any final thoughts, Melissa, that you have on, on getting all this set up? No, other than just, this is a great opportunity to, as we use all the word rest through the, it's an ideation section. It's a opportunity for improvements. A lot of it can come out, a lot can come out of this. So I think this is a great, great opportunity for. To do something yeah. we need to do and have Rest fun with it at the same time. Absolutely. And we're going to, yeah, exactly. and it's going to lead to yes, a lot more yes, great yes. discussion. So again, everyone be sure to subscribe and follow, uh, and Melissa, one more time, you want to let people know where they can find you and ask questions if they want to follow up on this discussion more. Yep. Here at ProChant. Oh, Melissa <laughs> S at ProChant.com. <laughs> Love it. Yep. All right. You. Yeah. Well, very cool. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you, Melissa, for joining us today. We will have a lot more for y'all very soon. So be sure to subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to hit the like button and the little bell. So you'll know when our next episode comes out. And if you get a chance, please rate us on Apple podcasts. It really helps spread the word about the show, but until next time, we'll see you later. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Modern Healthcare Back Office, a presentation of ProChant, a wholly owned revenue cycle management service dedicated to serving HME, pharmacy infusion, and other healthcare providers. Learn more about us at ProChant.com.